the God we serve. Hebrews 12, verse 18 to 22 says, For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, as that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and temptest. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Which means that you think that this rod of correction is going to be grievous. And at first, it may be. But you have to also understand that whoever much is given, much is also required. So once he has given you this chastisement, this rod of correction, there also comes this power. He says that whatsoever you ask for from the Father and you don't waver in the faith, you should achieve it and receive it from the Father of lights where there is no variableness at all. So that means when you ask life of him, he's not only going to give you life, but he's going to give it to you more abundantly. And not only that, but he's also going to give you an innumerable company of angels, which means that in the time of the wilderness with Jesus Christ, there was angels that ministered unto him when he had fasted and he had prayed. 40 days and 40 nights when he reviled the flesh and he received the things of the spirit. And that means that we have an election shore that is so great that even the angels, although they want to look into the things of the Holy Ghost, they cannot fathom it because it only is for those who are upon this earth. Because we have made our calling in our election shore. We have been refused by the things of this world. We have been hated by many, yet we stand triumphant. So you have to understand that in the Old Testament, there was a way that God spoke unto the people. There was a trumpet, there was a burning, there was a fire, there was darkness, there was a blackness. Yet, there was still a love. You still have to understand that. But don't forget, although God may not come now with this blackness and darkness and this fire, yet, he still has this rod of correction. And we have to hold on to the love of God as well as his correction. Without it, you will lean to your own understanding. Without it, honestly, you will get tired of this walk. Could you imagine if you just speak good all the time, if you only see good all the time, and you're never going through trials nor tribulations? How do you know that you're powerful? How do you know that you're learning anything unless you go through these trials? Even David, in the end, when in the times when Solomon was supposed to be king, and another raised up in order to be king, you see that through this, he was, although he had Abishai, he didn't comfort in the flesh. He wanted something more. He wanted another reason to live. And he said when he heard this happening, he realized that something revived within him. Because now he could show forth all the things that God had put within him. That he could show forth that he is stronger even in the weakest of times. As God even says, let the weak now say that they are strong. Don't look to the confidence of the flesh. Look to the things of the spirit. Which is why David was called a friend and a love or a man after God's own heart. Because he didn't stop at the things of the flesh. Although he gained the kingdom, might, and power. He still served God wholeheartedly. He didn't stop at gaining stuff. He wanted to gain eternal life. So how much more you? Don't stop at gaining stuff. God is going to bless you abundantly. But just know there's a greater blessing which reaps life and life eternally.